Hey everyone, my name is Jerry June and I'm a technical solution specialist here at ARM. And so what we're going to talk today about is about our Pelion Unified Identification, which is the key or keys I like to call it to IoT at scale. So unfortunately, Alan Tate, who uh, originated this uh, discussion, wasn't able to attend. So fill in for him and hopefully I do the topic some justice. So hopefully by the end of today's discussion, will understand how Pelion essentially provides a framework to configure securely connected devices with its applications across leading cloud providers. This is all done using uh, an in-device connected anywhere through technology from ARM. So everyone knows that deploying an IoT device is fairly complex and difficult. So the Pelion platform really aims to help reduce the complexity by providing a set of essential composable services across data, device, and connectivity. And so the idea is, through, born through the recent acquisitions of Treasure Data and Stream, the Pelion platform consists of a connectivity management service, which you can consider as a single pane of glass to do one bill, one integration, and one SIM across the world. Device management, which is a hybrid cloud solution that provides either, uh, well, it's a hybrid cloud solution to manage a diverse set of device configurations, to manage provisioning, and essentially be able to update them over the life cycle of the device. And finally, we have the data management platform, which is a platform for managing a rich data set for analytic purposes to monetize and market some more into the IoT uh, design and device that you're deploying. What we require across all these planes and services is a unified security model that's integrated into the device and enables security across the device's life cycle from really manufacturing to the retirement of that device in the field. So when we look at deployment diversity, we really have these devices that are being deployed across the world on a multitude of radio access technologies. So we see cellular, we see some non-cellular and we see satellite. These devices themselves are quite feature-rich or featureless, uh, being ultra-constrained, uh, maybe just waking up in a time of need, or really an infotainment type device that's streaming quite a bit of content. And of course, you have all the platforms that are managing all that data that's coming in and out of it uh, through the life cycle of that device. And so what the Pelling Composable Services includes is essentially the device or data management services, which is a source of ingestion for ingesting uh, data from a multitude of sources, and then being able to display them within a single view of that data. And we have the data management services, which enable that device or diverse device set to be provisioned and configured securely across the life cycle, once again, from manufacturing to retirement. And finally, for true scale deployment, we need a connectivity management platform, which provides the ability for those devices to connect to all the above services across any network, whether it be a 2G, 3G, CAT1 plus LTE, or LPWAN, MBIoT, or CATM. So what this platform does is enables partners and customers to benefit from a unified operational view and unified security model across the integration of all these Pelion services. The goal of all of this is to combine all the composable services and offer really a lower barrier to connect, to deploy, and to go to market and monetize on data-driven outcomes to expand the use cases of the IoT product. So across all the use cases and all the different services offered by Pelion, we see this underlying need for unified device identity ARM's goal, oh, ARM's goal is to scale. Uh, can we go back one slide? Sorry. Yeah, there we go. ARM's goal is to enable the ecosystem to hit one trillion connected devices. The way we can all accomplish that is by growing the ecosystem, enabling a diverse set of devices, especially low cost and easy to deploy devices. The key here is obviously to secure, securely connect those devices across the entire value chain while accomplishing this in a way that's scalable to even the lowest of cost devices. 
What are barriers to low cost and what are barriers to deployment? Well, all the hardware is unique. You have cellular modems with unique AT command sets, unique uh, connection management schemes. You have cost of manufacturing, there's cost of supply chain. And then you have all the different options for connectivity, which really lead to a lackluster results in deploying devices. We need IoT to make business critical decisions using real-time data, real-time data about the physical world. To do that, trust in the data is essential for the success of IoT. And really, a product is only as secure as its weakest link. So with the vision of IoT growing to a trillion devices, the massive numbers of connected devices that are going to get deployed are going to be generating a huge volume of data. So that data can either be processed locally, within the device, at the edge, or in the cloud. And to validate those business insights, it's all predicated upon model of trust. Trust in the devices, trust in the data that they're sending, and then using those sets of data for insight and action to make impactful decisions. And so really, trust is, brings value to the entire IoT ecosystem. So when we talk about trust, it always goes back to some scheme of a root of trust. And so ARM's ecosystem provides multiple solutions for protection of trust. So we have, so security really starts really at first time of boot. And so across the booting stages, you have validation of even the executable image to make sure that it in, has integrity and is encrypted depending on where it's stored. And so this root of trust can exist in some kind of framework, whether it be internal MVM or within some trust zone capabilities within a secure execution environment. And if we really want to talk about true isolated, uh, isolated processing, then we start talking about things like Secure Enclave with a crypto island subsystem, which is also a great place to house a SIM, and we'll talk about that later on and also more external components, for, such as an external secure element. So with all these types of uh, secure processing and secure ways of storing or protecting that root trust, there obviously are trade-offs, and these trade-offs come at risk and cost. But hopefully these trade-offs can be neutralized by the availability of technology and ease of adoption. So in a little bit, you'll hear from our counterparts from GSMA about this implementation guide for using the SIM as a root of trust and the corresponding IoT security applet, to, which essentially defines the properties needed by the SIM application to enhance security over common internet protocols. And it does that through a public key infrastructure and pre-shared key mechanisms. So you might wonder, why a SIM card? Well, when we start talking about identity, the SIM card really is a common identifier no matter what network it's connected to. The SIM itself has a secure processor and supports a Java card OS, which enables applet interoperability. And it's a pretty well-specified piece of hardware, thanks to people like our friends at GSMA, Global Platform, Etsy, through GBP. Additionally, it's a fully certifiable security uh, component, meaning common criteria protection profile with the EAL4 plus or evaluation assurance level, which means it was methodically designed, tested, and reviewed. Using the SIM, we can leverage existing assets for the management of the PKI certificates and or pre shared keys across several deployment scenarios, which are outlined within the implementation guideline. Additionally, what the security applet does is it enables a higher layer API set from an ARM PSA offering to define a common set of APIs to manage the underlying securing implementation to be leveraged across any OS and any device. So what is identity? How is a, a device recognized consistently across all the layers of IoT stack to ensure that it has the trusted access to its resources? So currently, the options are certificates, hardware identifiers, resource models. When we start looking at Pelion identity and device identity within the Pelion framework, we already have multiple implementations of identity, whether it's a Flake ID, 
a MAC address, some form of ICID ID, like from the SIM card, or a lightweight on-time resource identifier. These don't really scale to a trillion devices when you have to use all these, a multitude of these sources for identity. And so what Pelion's trying to do is to unify the identity from chip to cloud. And enabling Pelion identity across a certificate-based system, across all layers of the Pelion stack, as well as connecting to the cloud providers. So the building blocks of the Pelion identity come from the implementation of PKI certificates. Through the benefits of PKI, you can ensure that there's identity, authentication of identity, and that essentially the certificate itself and contents of the certificates are accurate. Bringing in the capabilities of ARM's uh, EUICC uh, manufacturing resources and as defined by the scenarios within the GSMA uh, implementation guideline for just using the SIM as a root of trust, we can inject the key pairs at time of UICC manufacturing and then uniquely pair that key pair with the specific ICD or RIMSI. -E. Also within the context of the scenarios identified for using the SIM, we're able to generate key pairs over there from SIM OTA methods that currently exist with connections to MNOs or by an IoT client via an IoT middleware talking down to the SIM. So once again, the SIM itself is a source of identity via the ICZ ID or MZ, and ultimately serves as a source of identity within the network operator. It's a tried and true and tested solution for both security identity, interoperability, and lifecycle management. And here at ARM, unique ID is inherent to the ISIM revolution. So ARM is driving how a SIM is integrated into devices. We've looked at the discrete SIM card for 20 years now, and it's a tried and trusted model. We've moved into the eSIM in the past five years, and with the eSIM comes the ability to remotely provision that SIM with multiple MNO profiles. What ARM is doing in the realm of SIM is by offering a fully leverageable solution to offload security certifications by the device by providing solutions like our crypto island security IP and our Keegan SIM OS to then put onto that crypto island. And so in the end, you'll have on the SOC a tamper-resistant element that runs a SIM operating system compliant to all the MNO requirements from connecting to the network. It's compliant to the GSMA RSP solution. And it meets all the common criteria protection profile required to become a smart card. This enables us to provision and enable security via applications like the IoT security applet at point of chip manufacturing and then use existing infrastructure to then go off and provision a set of asymmetric keys and get them signed into a certificate. So when we talk about the key elements of chip to cloud security, we have devices and a root of trust for storing those device secrets. With the security applet, we have an ability to essentially onboard generate those asymmetric keys. They'll never be exported except for the public component. And if they're never exported, only reside within a tamper-resistant secure enclave, they really can't be stolen. We have trusted firmware to ensure the integrity of software and the data components. We use and enforce a PKI-based key management to ensure authenticity, encryption, enable revocation, and we have roles and policies identified for the life cycle of that device. And for the device itself, we have secure onboarding with some form of attestation to ensure that this device really is what it is and offer a over there or firmer updating process throughout the life cycle of that device. And at the back end, we have device monitoring to detect and report any deviations from expected behavior so you can tell from the behavior itself whether that device is operating as it should be or not. So let's talk a little bit about, about ARM's Pelion connectivity management solution. So we talked a little bit about the SIM, how the SIM is a good place to store the root of trust. We talked about the ISIM revolution where we're putting the SIM OS into an integrated secure element. And let's talk about how we connect that SIM to the network. So one of ARM's composable services is our ARM Pelion connectivity management, which simplifies seamless global connectivity 
and is a trusted supplier for over 500 customers worldwide with 12 million device requests per day and 60 terabytes of network data flowing over per month. So our customers need to focus on IoT insights and not administration. And that's what we're trying to offer with the three pillars of Pelion connectivity management. With Pelion and a single SIM solution, you have flexibility to access over 600 networks around the world, 186 countries, and provide connectivity for every opportunity. From a simplicity perspective, it's easy to deploy new devices and scale up through the connection management platform. And the total cost of ownership, essentially, we have one integration to the Pelion connection management, which talks to a multitude of MMOs across the world and drives cost efficiency because Pelion, as it's growing its federated MMO footprint, is actually negotiating hard on your behalf to get the best rates in the countries that you care about. One SIM for the globe, like I said, 600 networks, 186 countries. With the advent of eSIM, maybe there's not a, a best or low, low cost of localization. Well, maybe there's not a best in-country rate at the moment. But across the federated network that we're building within the Pelican connectivity, you can eSIM or remotely provision that MNO profile later on when those rates are available. So if you've ever worked with connectivity management platform, we use it really for subscriber management, for things like activating, deactivating, barring, unbarring SIMs. Use it for analyzing the subscriber data, look at the usage, the sessions. Use it for inventory management, ordering new SIMs, stocking new SIMs, getting new profiles, and you use it for billing. And so within connectivity management, you have a single pane for subscriber management for reporting, usage and session data, subscriber data, troubleshooting that device in the field if it starts to fail or you can't get it connected or your application's not working. And you're setting up monitoring alerts. So you can create rules, for instance, if that device is used over X amount of KB in the past 24 hours, let's go ahead and bar that SIM. And so these are all kind of used to detect any abnormal behaviors from that device in the field. So how do we enable SIM-based identity in Pelion? What the Pelion platform has done is, is simplified device provisioning with one click into Azure. And so from the Pelion platform, there's an ability to link to Azure within the portal of the user, uh, user portal and then you need the DPS ID, the device provisioning service ID, tenant ID, and within an integrated solution, it provides uh, such a one-click access to, to deploy that device within Azure. And so within Azure, you can actually see that that device is linked with its ICS ID, which is essentially the SIM card that's used to connect that device onto Pelion. When we go through an example of how this type of solution will work, you have the user, which activates a SIM. That SIM can be generated at time of manufacturing with a set of credentials, uh, either talking to a boot, the bootstrap server for Pelling device management, or a pair of certificates for use in the end cloud service. You provision that SIM onto the network, register that certificate within Azure, and register the identity within Pelion device management. And once you've deployed that device, that device can then bootstrap back to the Pelion device management and also then communicate with the business cloud. So this is an offering that's a pairing of both the Pelion connectivity management for deploying that device, getting an m and rate applied to that device, deploying any in the world onto 2G, 3G, LTE networks, and then using the SIM itself to harness this and hold securely the certificate for which that end device will then use to securely connect to the end cloud or device management platforms. So thank you for your time. And if you have any more questions or ideas, please reach out to Alan Tate, who is the director of engineering who put these slides together, and or myself, Jerry June technical solution specialist and I'm supporting 
our ARM SIM OS, RSP, and Pelican Connectivity Management in North America. Thanks.